free magic charges, a stove terrace to Shishimad, his divine grace, AC Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Shiva Upadki, the Kilila Pavisha Om Vishnu Pad, her own hands, free magic charge, a stove terrace to Shishimad, his divine grace, Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur Maharaj Upadki, Ananda Bodhi Vaishna Vinki, Rantrashmat Bhagavad Gita Ki, Rita Gura Pamanandi, all glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories, all glories to the glorious feet of Shishu Guru and Gauranga. Intelligent person. 
translation by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada. An intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight. <coughs> Please repeat. An intelligent person, An intelligent person does, not does not take part in the sources of misery, in the sources of misery which are due to contact, which are due to contact with the material senses. With the material senses. O son of Kunti, o son of Kunti such, pleasures such pleasures have a beginning, have a beginning and an end. And an end. And so the wise man does not delight in them. Does not delight in them. Purport by the language of Prabhupada. Material sense pleasures are due to the contact of the material senses, which are all temporary, because the body itself is temporary. A liberated soul is not interested in anything which is temporary. Knowing well the joys of transcendental pleasures, how can a liberated soul agree to enjoy false pleasure? In the Padma Purana, it is said, Ramante yogino nante satyadante chinatmani iti rama parinasho param brahma diyate also in Chaitanya Chaitamita, my dear, 9.29. Translation, the mystics derived unlimited transcendental pleasures from the Absolute Truth. And therefore, the Supreme Absolute Truth, the Personality of Godhead, is also known as Ram. In the Srimad Bhagavatam also, Canto 5, Chapter 5, Text 1, It is said, Nayam behood behabadam luke, Kastan kamam ahati bipudam ye, Tapo dipyam putaka ye nasadvam, Sujet yasmat brahma sakyam twan nanantam. My dear sons, there is no reason to labor very hard for sense pleasure while in this human form of life. Such pleasures are available to the stool eaters, hawks. Rather, you should undergo penances in this life by which your existence will be purified, and as a result, you will be able to enjoy unlimited transcendental bliss. Therefore, those who are true yogis or learned transcendentalists are not attracted by sense pleasures which are the causes of continuous material existence. The more one is addicted to material pleasures, the more he is entrapped by material miseries. Om Magina Timirandyasya Vyana Gina Shalakaya Chakshu Unmiltam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Ki Chaitanya Manovistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Vayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadatri Swam Padanikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yuta Padakama Sri Guru Vaisnavam Sita Sri Rupa Sagadatam Sahagana Raghunatam Vitam Tamsa Jeevam Sadvetam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Deva Sri Rathna Pada Sahagana Dadita Sri Vishakam Vitamata E Krishna Kruna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate Dakta Kanchana Gorangi Radhe Vrindavaneshwari Vishamanu Sute Devi Paramani Hari Priya Vancha Kalpa Tarubhyasya Kripa Sivya Evacha Patitanam Bhavanevyo Vaishnavevyo Namohan Maha Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adesha Dada Shiva Shadi Gaur Vakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ram Ram Hare Hare 
हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे नम ओम विष्णु पदाय कृष्ण पृष्ठाय भूतले श्रीमाति भक्ति वेदांत स्वामी नीतिनाथिने नमस्ते सरस्वती देवी गौरवाणी प्रचारिणी निर्विशेष शून्य वाली पश्चिम नमो महाबदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय के कृष्णाया कृष्ण चैतान्य नम ने गौराचे नम आनंद लीलमाय विग्रहाय हिमाद्य दिव्य छवि सुंदराय तस्मी महाप्रेम रास प्रदाय चितान्य चंदाय नमो नमस्ते चितान्य चंदाय नमो नमस्ते चितान्य चंदाय नमो नमस्ते चितान्य चंदाय नमो नमस्ते हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण सो आई रीड दी टेक्स्ट इन द ट्रांसलेशन अगेन यू डोंट हैव टू रीड The intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery which are due to contact with the material senses. O son of Kunti, such pleasures have a beginning and an end, and so the wise man does not delight in them. Hare Krishna. So in this text, Sri Krishna is speaking to Arjun about what amounts to intelligence. An intelligent person and what that person does. An intelligent person in the material world is not going to take part in some things that are miserable. A lot of things are miserable in the material world. A lot of people are in denial that things are miserable in the material world. A lot of people can swear they're okay. But when we get a snowstorm, storm, are they okay then? When we hear in the news that wonderful million dollar houses are being burnt in California, it may not be your house, you just heard it in the news. But the person who's lost their house what kind of feeling are they going through? So where is the happiness? Am I missing something? You tell me. So Krishna is explaining that the one that's intelligent does not connect with the material things in the material world. They simply don't. At best, they will start, they will end. They're temporary. Hmm? These sources of misery, they are due to, as Krishna is saying, contact with the material senses. Which means, if we use material senses for material enjoyment, so-called enjoyment, we are actually going to wind up miserable. There's a saying in Ghana, in my language, which I will not go through the language itself, I'll just do the translation for it. I don't think anybody here knows what it is. But it says that, Whatever seems to be pleasurable, there is something miserable attached to it. And everybody in my language understands that. It's a proverb. But you can't really, really, so-called, begin to enjoy, enjoy totally. His own nature on the Mali Swami said, some time back in the lecture I was listening to, actually yesterday I was listening to it, but it was about two years ago he gave this lecture in Harrisburg. He said, the material body is very interesting. There are two things about the material body. You cannot neglect it, and you cannot enjoy it. If you neglect it, you'll wind up in the hospital. <laughs> you cannot neglect it. And if you try to enjoy it, it will make you sick. So you like to eat. Sure, go on. One plate, second plate, third plate, fourth plate. Fifthly, can you? You like to drink. Unfortunately, Sri Prabhupada is not making us drink. I'm talking about alcohol now. Those who drink one glass, a second glass, third glass, fourth glass, and then what happens? They lose a the sense of equilibrium. Everything that they've been keeping in the closet that nobody should know, all of a sudden they start talking about all those things. It's called, we are uninhibited now. Uninhibited means now everything about you that's bad, the whole world is going to know about it. 
And then the worst part of it is too much drinking, then a vomit. Very embarrassing. Next day, they get a hangover. The body is being poisoned. And that's called enjoyment. I was talking to my daughter one time we went to uh, Harris, uh, Baltimore. So it takes us about an hour and a half to go to Baltimore. We're coming back, and my daughter is 16, the youngest one. I have an older one, the young one. And I said, all oh, through high school, people tried to drink, and being cool and to do those kind of things and smoke and so on. But even at home, sometimes when people came to visit, my mother would have beer and give it to them. Now I'm like eight, nine years old. That thing is called beer because we as children are not allowed to drink beer. And you know how children are. We're very curious. And so, <laughs> so I'm about to confess here. <laughs> so when the whoever is visiting, they finish the beer and all the these in bottles, the green bottles, I remember, bigger bottles than what we have here. And in the port in the glass, and they talk about whatever they talk about. Now we know it's called Grammy Qatar, right? It's about God's mercy. In the world they talk. And then they drink. And we, the children, are supposed to take the glass and all those things and wash it. Mm -hmm. So there's the bottle is finished. But beer is a liquid, as you well know. So there's a little bit left in the bottom. And I'm going. So what is it that these adults drink to be and that they don't want us to know? So without my parents knowing, I decided, I am going to taste it. It's a little bit of it left. So now I raised the bottle in my head like this, and have a little bit, eight years, nine years old now, a little bit of beer came to my head. I said, look, this thing is bitter. It is bitter. So how can people drink something that's bitter and they say they're having a good time. Give me something sweet anytime. I won't drink this kind of stuff. So fortunately, Sri Baba didn't have to convince me not to drink alcohol. Because that thing is bitter. That was my conclusion. So I never got attracted to it in high school. I never got attracted to it in college. I played in a band. And you know when you play in a band in nightclubs. And that is, this is before I became the Woody now. That's what's around. Drinks. And the band was very good. I was a leader of the band, as a matter of fact. Keyboard player and leader. And when we finished playing, a lot of people like the music, so we invite come sit at our table, sit at our table. And some of the band members, you get beer, you get wine, they get all kinds of things, people buy it for them. Then they point to me and say, this guy, he doesn't drink beer, so give him soda. You, know, look at, you don't drink beer? I said, no. So they put soda in front of me. So this whole time, after now, when I meet my friends, I, they would drink beer, and I take juice or something. So Shri Prabhupada has actually blessed us because when you drink, you violate the body. You ruin the body. You ruin the liver. You ruin the brains temporarily. That's ruin the liver. So what we have been given, the four regulatory principles, are actually principles of management and peace in the material world. If you gamble, gambling in any facility is set up in such a way that the gambling facility makes more money than you do. If you play the lottery, the national lottery, whatever you call it, six numbers or something out of 36, if I'm getting the numbers right, I don't know. But I think it's so. If you know math and you do what's called probability, the probability of you winning, you have one chance in 1.9 million to win. In other words, for one dollar that the facility gives to you, they get 1.9 million. And if you want to play every week to increase your chances of winning one time, you're going to have to live, and I did the math, about 10 years. This is called a mathematical expectation. You have to live 10 years. I mean, I'm sorry, 10,000 years. <laughs> I'm sorry, 10, 10 years you would have tried it. 10,000 years you have to live before you live. Hmm? Carl, you get cut off at 100. You can't get 1,000, much less 10,000 years. It takes 10,000 years to have a high chance of winning the lottery one time. And then, if you win, 
Say you win a million dollars, they don't give you a million dollars. They don't. They will give you a million dollars over 20 years. So they'll give you $50,000 and Uncle Sam will take $13,000 of it. So they wind up giving you $37,000 after you live how many? 10,000 years? If you can. Remember, we're not in Twitter, you get any more. We're not in Saturday, you get any more. Those times you can live that long. So obviously, it's a losing proposition. It's not worth trying it. And this is why when someone wins, they make a big show of it. Mm -hmm. They won two million, five million, ten million. They make a big announcement because it's going to inspire more people. To say, oh yeah, I can win too. If they want, I can win. Now they put even more money in there, but the expectation is one in one point nine million. So then the government makes even more money. So she said, "What is putting so simple? No gambling. Mm -hmm. Two words: no gambling. Meat eating. This body is not designed for meat eating." The entities, the living entities that eat meat, mostly the animals, if you open their mouth, there's no mistaking that tooth that's very long that sticks out. There's four of them, two on the bottom and two on the front on the top. They use to tear the meat. Canine teeth, they call them. Then I went to biology school, biology school, and then he taught biology and they said, humans have canine teeth too, and I'm going, where? so-called canine teeth. We don't have canine teeth. So let me be the first one to tell you. We are in science, I've been involved in research. That's just a hoax. Humans don't have any canine teeth, but somewhere in the corner before the premolars, they say it was a canine tooth. So if they say canine tooth in the school, tell them it's canine, therefore they can give you grades. But in reality, humans don't have any canine teeth. They don't. Our tooth structure resembles all of those animals that eat grass and, and vegetables. The cow. Mm -hmm. the goat. You open their mouth, their tooth structure is very similar to the human one. And then the other ones that eat meat, they have those teeth, the canine teeth that's long and is used in tearing the meat. The intestines of those meat eaters, those ones, are very short. And then, even, that's even, I've gone a bit too far, when you eat, when they eat meat, it goes into their stomach as everybody's you know, food goes into their stomach. There is what's called gastric juice to help to digest and also kill uh, germs. The ones that the animals that eat meat, their gastric juice is an acid, in chemistry we call it hydrochloric acid. It's 13 times more potent than the ones that in humans. Because humans aren't supposed to have any meat breakdown in the stomach. We are not supposed to be eating meat in the first place. Vegetables don't require that, that acid that's, that's you know, very strong. And besides, you know, animals, they eat off the floor, off, off the ground. Any kind of stuff can go into their mouth along with whatever they call food. So they need an acid that's potent to kill whatever germs that's in there. Humans don't do that. The intestines for humans are much longer. For the animals that eat meat, it's much shorter because the waste has to clear more quickly. So the entire body is designed that way. So the Baba says, no meat eating, no fish, no eggs. So this is, so science literally, from what I'm talking about, can prove that Chirapapa's regulatory principles are correct. That's the way it's supposed, for the human being. We're not even talking spirituality now, it's just the way the human body is designed. It's for those things. So no meat eating, no gambling, no intoxication, and then no illicit sex. Well, as far as sex goes, if there is sex life between any living entities here, the next thing is the female species gets pregnant. That's just the way the body is designed. So that's why Sri Papa says, if you're going to involve yourself sexually, then you should be ready to be responsible for the product of that, the progeny that comes, the child that comes. So Sri Papa hasn't said anything new. The human body is designed that way. If you want to lose money, then go gamble, then, because you will lose. Hmm? If you eat meat, the body's not going to be able to take it. It's not designed that way. If you involve yourself sexually, you are going to get pregnant, whether you want to or not. Whether you want to or not. So, the regulatory principles are just for the physical body to be able to use it in the mode of goodness. The bodies are supposed to act in the mode of goodness, then to transcendence. 
And in Kali Yuga, transcendence has been made very simple. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Because Srila Prabhupada says in the purport that material sense pleasures are due to contact of the material senses, which are all temporary. The body itself is temporary. A liberated soul is not interested in anything which is temporary. Can you blame them? Why deal with something temporary when the intelligent person, a liberated soul, knows that there is permanence? The soul is permanent. The soul doesn't die. The soul is connected with the Supreme Personality of Godhead and the soul is in bliss. That is its nature. Bliss, in the dictionary, will tell you it means the highest happiness. The highest happiness. And so we say, well, our souls are in our bodies, in the heart area, and it's not active like the way it is when it's in the spiritual world. When the spiritual world is expanded in its fullness, we go to the spirit, and there's so much enjoyment, and no anxiety, no worries, nothing. So what about the situation we're in now? The soul is not visible. We are told it's in the heart area, and it is in the heart area. That's why every time anybody says, me, they go like this. Me. You don't have to be trained to do that. They just hit this part, because that's where the real you is anyway, in the heart area. Now, so we try to enjoy materially. It doesn't work. So now Sri Prabhupada has told us, Stick with the spiritual process. The hearing, very, very important. The Papa said chanting in this Yuga is the most important. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. But he also said the first thing to do is to hear. So why does he say chanting is most important? It's the Yuga Dharma, but hearing is the first thing to do. Hearing is first because with hearing we get the guidance that we need. We have questions about spirituality. If you begin to hear, the answers will come because Krishna would arrange through his mercy, through his agents, to tell exactly what we need. Many, 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 many times when you listen to a lecture, you go, I was thinking about this, 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 and then the answer came. I heard the lecture and the answer came. Well, that's why we hear. That's why we need to hear and hear constantly. As a matter of fact, it's good to hear every single day. Every single day. Not only Sundays when you come to hear the person that's speaking, because online there's Iskand Desire Tree. There's a whole bunch of lectures on Iskand Desire Tree. Take your pick. Whichever Swami you like or Prabhu you like, the picture is there, something about them is written, there's a whole bunch of lectures. All you do is click on it, and here you go. Every day. You say, but I don't have time. Yes, you do. I'm sorry to disagree with you. Yes, you do. Some people say, I can really bet you I don't have any time. Well, then this is what you do. You take a pencil and a paper, and you write everything that you're supposed to you say you do from when you wake up until when you go to bed. Program yourself. And all the things that are part of it that is unimportant, the time that you watch TV, cross that out. The time that you do other things material, cross those out. Next thing you know, you have time to finish more than 16 rounds and do so many things about hearing and all of that. We ourselves have put things that are material, just like an intelligent person does not take part in the sources of misery. Of, of misery. We ourselves have put so many things in here to hold and waste our time. We have been told this is not the place for us. The material world is not for us. It's not for us to be. We're going back to Godhead. If you want to go back to Godhead, you have to do the spiritual thing. Therefore, we shouldn't do the material things. So one of the things that's very important, very helpful, is to program yourself. Write the things that you do and the times that you do. Hmm? Give them a period of time that's appropriate for each one of them and cancel out all those things that are material that don't serve you anyway 
Hmm? Cancel those things out. You'll have plenty of time left to do more spiritual things. I do it myself. I find it works very well. And if I stay away from it, then Maya got me. <laughs> so if that's a confession, it is a confession. Most, most, I should say, most of the advanced devotees, they did that. Sri Prabhupada did that. Sri Security Prabhu, who was a Sri Prabhupada disciple, who actually served him directly. He was asked this question, what do you find so profound about Sri Prabhupada? Sri Security Prabhu said, what I find very fascinating about Sri Prabhupada is he does the same thing wherever he goes. He does the same thing. In other words, when he has to give a lecture or when he has to meet people, that's one thing. But when that time is all gone and he has time for himself, he works the same way. Which means he's programmed himself. Same thing we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Another thing about my disciple, Mother Kalini, now she left the body. She so didn't agree. Very, 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 very strictly programmed. The whole life is like that. Mm -hmm. When she was around, she milks the cows, believe it or not, 2 o'clock in the morning. She gets up, yes. It doesn't matter whether there's nice weather out there or whether there's snow. She puts on the boots and she's gone. Milks the cow, 2.30, she's in the barn. Milks the cows, comes in, chants some rounds, and then there's Mangalati. And then she does Mangalati, and then she dresses Jagannath uh, Bhadeva Subhadra, she finishes that, and then goes to Guru Puja, she does Guru Puja, she has a prasadam, and, and I missed one thing, Sometimes, most of the time she will be in the kitchen also. After she finishes dressing, it, she goes in the kitchen to cook for the offering before the 7.30 uh, Guru Puja in, in, the, in, in the class. So she finishes that, and then she goes to the room, chants a little more, then she's back in the kitchen to prepare for lunch. So she goes on like that until the evening, 8 o'clock, she's in bed. If you knock at Mother Kalini's door at 8 o'clock, unless there's an emergency, she will not open the door. Six hours, the sleep papa said, 6, 8 to 2 o'clock, 2 o'clock is out. Next day, right to the barn. Like that. It was very, very, very programmed. And programming helps you a lot because programming, if you just sit down and write the things you have to do, take out all the material things that have been wasting our time, be the spiritual things and stick to it. Stick to it. You will do very well. The more you program, the less Maya has influence on you. That is a fact. The more program you are, the more you just do it, you know, free for all. Yeah, Maya says free for all means time for me. And it gives you time to do this, that, and this, and that. Maya is expert. He never says, oh, spend so much time, three hours watching TV. No, it's just, you know, this uh, program here, it's about 10 minutes. Just do 10 minutes. Then you can go do, and the 10 minutes is over. But then this other one too is there, you know. You can maybe do that too. Then the other one. In the meantime, you haven't chanted around. But you're going on and on and on and on. And now it's 8 o'clock. Then you watch a little more. Then 9 o'clock. Then 10 o'clock. Well, it's time to go to bed. Because you have to get up early for work the next day. 10 o'clock. But I haven't finished my rounds. Maya says, but you're tired. <laughs> <laughs> so let's rest. And tomorrow, we will do the rounds. And tomorrow, guess what? Maya got you. You got your number, right? Same thing. You suggest this, suggest this, suggest this. So you didn't do yesterday's rounds and today's rounds. And all of a sudden you got, not 16, you got 32 rounds, right? And um, I didn't sleep that early, so today I'm just going to go to work. No rounds in the morning. Not even some. Go to work, come back. TV is looking at you and smiling at you. TV always smiles. People are paying to smile. So they, they smile and you just watch it. It's very attractive. Mm -hmm. Joining is an unintelligent person taking part in the sources of misery. The rounds are not done. Um, yeah, it's true, the rounds are not done, but what to do? Can I do 32 rounds in one night? I don't think so. <laughs> yeah, I'm so. I'm going to go to bed. I'm in Maya, but I'm going to admit that I'm in Maya. <laughs> I'm in Maya. But see, it's from a little Maya. But the Maya said, don't expect Maya to give you a big reason to fall down. 
It's always little, a little bit, a little bit here, a little bit, a little bit here. So I myself have my program. I know when I get up, and when it's time to chant, I chant in the morning. 6.30, if I don't go to the temple, 6.30, I'm supposed to start chanting. What's the time? 6.15, you better get in and take a shower because 6.30 is coming. Next week, 6.20, 6.25, and I'm going, my wife says, I'm taking a shower first. I'm going, oh, all right, <laughs> okay? So I'm going to be like 15 minutes late. You always have to be on guard, though. That's the point. You have to be on guard because Maya is always working to try to railroad our spiritual life, destroy our spiritual life. Maya actually doesn't mean to destroy her spiritual life, but it seems like that because what she does is test us. You say you want to be a devotee. Really? What about those things that are material? You still not like them? If I suggest to go to this part here and do that and do this and do this, would you not do it? So then he just tests you. Yeah. Do it. Your phone rings. You haven't done it around. Somebody comes on the phone, talks all kinds of stuff. No Krishna consciousness in it. So much time is gone. So we need to program ourselves. That way, if you program yourself and you stick to the, you just go read it. At 6.30, this is what I do. At 8 o'clock, this is what I do. Then, like that, until you get home and stick with that. You will be far, in, you'll, you'll be in much better control of time. you waste very little of it. Now, most of us here are, okay, it's about 10 minutes, so I think I'm supposed to stop at 5.30, yes? Okay, all right, so it's 5.20 now. Um, <clears throat> most of us are either in the Grahasa Ashram now, or will be in the Grahasa Ashram if we're younger, or have been in the Grahasa Ashram. A good many of us are still in the Grahasa Ashram. So a few things. The Grahasa Ashram, talking about the material senses and connecting with them, this particular ashram tends to present more challenges because we have to deal more with the material energy. That's just the way it is, Grahasa. So it's because this text talks about connecting. An intelligent person does not want to connect with the material energy sources of misery. But in this particular ashram, Grihasa ashram, we like forced to be a part of it. Many of us go to work and we deal with uh, colleagues who are not Krishna conscious. Mm -hmm. If you do things around them, they're going to go, what does that mean? Uh, you take a uh, Brahman prayer, you start you're quiet, you're chanting Gayatri. They're going to look at you, there's something wrong with this guy. One time I literally got pulled over by cops in a mall because I had my car open, the door open. It's in the parking lot in the mall. And I pulled my bum into it and a little bit of it was sticking out. So the police saw me and I looked funny to them. So they approached me and interrupted the guy too, of course. I can't say I can't speak to them. And so, what is this? And I explained as best as I can to them. I belong to the Vedic faith. They go, what is that? Uh, don't worry about that. But that belongs to the Vedic faith. And I'm supposed to do this. This is a string that I use. It's actually for prayers. They didn't believe me. They did not believe me. So they questioned, what are you doing here? In a mall parking lot. So I had to tell them, my wife is working at Hex. And so I'm here to pick her up. She's going to be... So they checked on it and they found out it was true. Then they left me alone. Okay, now you can talk about profiling or whatever else in my body, but I'm doing guys when a cop stops me. Because he doesn't understand. If it was a devotee around me, he would know not to talk to me, and he certainly wouldn't disturb me either, because he know what it's about. So we have to deal with this material energy and the people in the material energy who are, for the most part, lost, but they don't know. So, it's important that we keep Krishna in the center of everything that we do. Married couples, hmm, Husband and wife should relate in such a way that they have the understanding that Krishna is important in our lives at any time. So we can imagine a triangle. It's got three corners. Husband is in one corner, wife is in one corner, and on top is Krishna. So a husband and wife can relate here, and then husband over here to Krishna, and wife over here to Krishna. That's the way it should be. Everything that we do should be either directly or indirectly to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, finally, 
How do we serve Krishna? Well, we have been given instructions by the spiritual master on how to do that. We have deity service, we have chanting, and so on. The idea for a devotee is to develop Krishna prema, right? This is the aim of a devotee, to love God. Well, we cannot love God without loving God's parts and parcels. Who are the Lord's parts and parcels? The devotees. So, in order to love Krishna, you have to develop love for the devotees first. Which means you don't offend devotees. You don't get angry at devotees. You don't criticize. And you don't gossip about devotees. All of these things are the nectar of devotion. There are actually 32 offenses. I just named three of them. You don't do that. And so, by taking up the negative things, you'll be left with the positive things. So you relate well to the bodies, and with that, you begin to develop love for Guru. What is a love for Guru? It's not like Guru is your boyfriend, because <laughs> it doesn't work like that. But Guru, every Guru has a mission. So then you make sure that you become part of the mission. How do you do that? You just ask. You just ask. Those people whose devotees whose gurus have left the bodies, all you do is go to the picture of the guru, because the picture of the guru has potency too. And then you ask. If you're not initiated, go to Sri Prabhupada and ask him to get guidance. So, service to guru, first service and no offense towards the bodies, then service to guru, and with that, we begin to develop service to, I mean, uh, uh, love for Krishna. Because Krishna wants that. Krishna is one that says, approach Guru and inquire from him. Bhagavad hmm? Gita 4.15, approach Guru, inquire, serve him. Inquire submissively, don't go challenge him. Serve him, hmm? because he knows the truth. So through that, then Krishna will slowly begin to reveal himself in his own time. Krishna consciousness requires patience, according to nature of instruction. It requires patience. And then we begin to love Krishna. And everything about Krishna would automatically make us not get interested in these temporary things that an intelligent person does not connect with. Hare Krishna. Yes. 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 Any questions or comments? We've got about four minutes. Or correction. That also. <laughs> I should humbly accept that. Okay. Um, so it's almost 5 30 then. Um, so I think we'll stop here. Uh, Thank you for tolerating me. This is my first time ever uh, coming here to preach. And I was on instructions of two Shiksha Gurus that said, Preach it, you should start going around and preaching. So I, I just asked to come because the Guru says, Do it, then you do. You don't obey, disobey the Guru's orders. So two Gurus in this kind said, Go around and preach. So I'm doing it. And that's why I'm here today. But I'm also very, very happy to be here. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Bhaisnap Tatwaki, Nithai Gore Pramalande, Nithai Gore Pramalande, Nithai Gore Pramalande,